In this video, we will discuss the sense and nonsense of imaging for low back pain and how it can sometimes do more harm than good. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Currently, one in four patients presenting to primary care with low back pain receives imaging such as X-ray, CT or MRI. This is a high number regarding the fact that about 1% of low back pain has a serious underlying pathology and most guidelines advise against imaging in routine care for low back pain. This high number may partly be due to the fact that half of all patients with low back pain consider imaging necessary following a survey of Jenkins et al. in the year 2015. Unfortunately, prospective studies by Lemmers in 2019 and Powell in 2018 show that early use of imaging in low back pain may be associated with higher medical cost, increased health utilization, persistent pain and more absence from work. This is not to say that imaging does not have a value as it can rule out or confirm serious pathology in case a pattern of red flags is present. However, it seems that imaging is very much overused and the inappropriate use of imaging can harm in three ways, as Darlow and colleagues put it. First, when clinicians misinterpret the imaging findings. Second, when the findings are misinterpreted by the patient. And third, by exposure to radiation. Let's look at the first two points more closely. A study by Herzog et al. in the year 2017 had 10 different radiologists take and interpret an MRI of a 63-year-old woman. The results showed that 49 different pathological findings were described among all of the MRI reports. 16 were unique, but none of these were reported unanimously in every of the 10 MRI reports. Only one finding, namely anterior spondylolysthesis, was reported in 9 out of 10 reports. Next to poor agreement of findings, there was a high rate of interpretation errors and each radiologist averaged 12 errors. Next to the problem of a low inter-radar reliability, we have learned from the review of Brinikai et al. in 2015 that asymptomatic findings in the lumbar spine are extremely common. So even in your 20s or 30s, the chance of having some sort of abnormality on an MRI scan is very high. Unless these findings match the clinical picture, they should be considered wrinkles or grey hair from the inside. By the way, asymptomatic findings are not only common in the lumbar spine, but are found throughout the body. Even when abnormalities are found on MRI in people who do have low back pain, the findings only poorly correlate to the degree of disability or intensity of low back pain nor do these findings predict future episodes of back pain. The second, probably even bigger problem, is the impact that imaging can have on a patient, especially when findings are not explained to a patient, in common language and in light of epidemiological data. Sloan et al. in the year 2010 showed that the use of degenerative terms such as wear and tear or disc space loss by patients were associated with a poor perceived prognosis. This misinterpretation by the patient can result in catastrophization, fear and avoidance of movement and activity and low expectations of recovery. On the contrary, simply including an epidemiological statement, for example, showing the findings of Brinninkai has been found to decrease the use of narcotic medication for patients with low back pain and radiculopathy. To sum it up, imaging does have its place in diagnosis of low back pain in case serious pathology or progressive radiculopathy is suspected. However, the inappropriate overuse in non-specific low back pain can do more harm than good. Findings should always be interpreted together with the clinical picture and interpreted in the light of epidemiological data. At last, it's important to explain these findings to patients in a simple language and to avoid terms that can cause a nocebo. 
Okay, that was our video on the sense and nonsense of imaging for low back pain. As always, the extensive list of research papers we used for all of these videos can be found in the description down below. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button down below and make sure you are subscribed. This video and much more will be included in our soon to be released online course on the spine that you can find on study.physiotutors.com. This was Kai for Physiotutors. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.